do you anticipate keeping Sterling Brown in the starting lineup, or, or do you think you're going to make some shifts there? Sterling will start. Uh, Tony Snell obviously came back in those last two games, got to play a little bit in the Pistons series. Kind of where is he at, and what are you expecting from him today? Um, you know, he's he's available. I think he's, you know, getting, I think, even stronger, more confident. Um, obviously, he was available, but I think, you know, there's still, he can get stronger and better. And so he's had a couple good days of practice. So if we need him, we'll use him, um, kind of see how the game goes. But, uh, you know, it's great that he's making, or he's back and ready. In the playoffs, a lot of teams will shorten their, their rotation a little bit. You didn't have to do that very much in the Detroit series. Do you expect to kind of tighten things up a little bit here in this round? No. Okay. Any more questions? Up front, Ashley. Can you give us a, a sense of when or if Malcolm is going to be available this round? Yeah, you know, we're just going to reassess him after uh, the second game. You know, I think. Uh, it was good for all of us just to, you know, have clarity. And I think it was, you know, an important five or six days here that, you know, he's two or three days into him and he's done really well. And, um, you know, we just got to continue to kind of see him and we'll reassess and reevaluate and see how he's feeling, um, you know, at that point. You mentioned not tightening the rotation. Obviously, if certain guys play more, you know, how, how do you plan to use that depth? Why is it so important to utilize that depth and continue using it? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of guys that can help us. You know, I think the way we play, um, you know, on both ends of the court, defensively, I think, you know, we, we really want to be active, um, you know, really committed to everything we're doing, uh, be great on that end, and then offensively play with a lot of pace. And so I think our depth and using, you know, a lot of players uh, is important to us, keeping guys fresh. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, you know, hopefully we just, you know, with Tony back and, um, at whatever point Malcolm becomes available, we just have more people to throw at our opponent. And, um, you know, I, I, I do understand that the rotation sometimes in the playoffs gets shorter, and if needed, that will happen. But uh, certainly the plan and the hope is we continue to play, you know, a lot of guys and keep guys fresh and keep playing fast and with a lot of energy and effort on both ends. Coach, uh, just a follow up on Malcolm. Uh, are there any benchmarks or, or, or points that you guys are looking to see him progress at before you and the medical staff are comfortable with him being returning to action? Um, I mean, kind of the specifics of the benchmark are probably, you know, better than medical would actually address them. But just playing, you know, five on five, having multiple, you know, scrimmages or five on five opportunities, seeing how he responds to those five on five opportunities and uh, making sure the next day when he comes back in, he's still feeling great and, you know, continuing to move forward. Uh, without any kind of setbacks. And so, um, you know, he has played some five on five and um, he needs more. Uh, Bledsoe didn't have a particularly great series against the Celtics last year. What do you expect out of him this year? And, and, you know, in part because of maybe incentive for, from him and also the way he's changed his game in, uh, in this season. Yeah, I mean, I can really only speak to, you know, what Bled's done all year, what Bled did in the first round. Uh, his focus, his commitment to the team, to you know his teammates being great for everybody. He's just been phenomenal. So, um, you know, I expect Bled to be Bled, and uh, you know I think he's uh, looking forward to just being in the playoffs and being with a great group. And um, you know I think he's just excited about the second round and um, playing well. Uh, but based on what we saw last night, how, how often in the playoffs does crowd noise? become a factor in terms of you doing your job, communicating with guys on the floor, guys with guys out on the floor? Do you have sort of backup systems, hand signals, things like that? Yeah, no doubt, you know, the, the uh, you know, crowd effect or the noise can, you know, affect certain situations, certain things that happen in a game. And um, yeah, you usually have, you know, but sometimes hand signals don't work because nobody's looking at you, um, you know, so. I think, you know, there has to be kind of an awareness on the player's part, um, coach's part, you know, maybe communicating in advance, but, you know, it's it's part of, uh, it's always been a part of, you know, basketball and crowds and regular season, postseason, um, you know, it, it can have an impact and um, we're all vulnerable, vulnerable to it. But are you expecting any effect from the long layoff and how did you guys 
kind of plan for that? Yeah, no, I don't think it's ideal, uh, you know, but the thing, you know, both teams have had to deal with the same, you know, I guess they probably even have one more day. Um, so, you know, we tried to balance rest and getting healthy and working on our execution, working on our game plan and just playing, you know, letting them keep their rhythm. And um, so it's, it's a really, really uh, difficult equation. And if you've been around a long time, you've seen it done a lot of different ways and you're never sure which one is right. And teams are different, players are different, what they need. So of course we hope we did a good job. And we'll have an idea, you know, in a couple hours, but uh, it's it's not ideal for either team. Coach, being that these guys are mostly creatures of habit, how do you kind of get them ready for a noon local time start? Yeah, you know, we, we had a you know a handful of those games uh, during the year, and so you know I think hopefully they've developed a little bit of a routine for those day games. It's it's actually when we practice is at noon, so. Um, in some ways, it'll be like a practice day. I think their routine and their timing, and um, you know, but it's certainly you don't have you know seventy or seventy-five reps of playing at you know twelve. So, uh, but again, both of us are dealing with it. All the players, both sides, um, and it's a little bit individual for them. Mike, I think this is your third playoff series planning uh, against Kyrie, but the first time, obviously, that he is the number one option and they're, you know, their go-to guy. How different was it for you this time to put together a game plan for him? Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, him being the focal point, the ball in his hands, being the guy that, uh, you know, is going to initiate a lot of their actions. So. Um, just a ton of emphasis on, you know, the details of where you're guarding him, when you're picking him up, how you're guarding him, um, you know, the places he likes to get to, the shots he likes to get to. Um, but, you know, still a lot of time on their bigs. Their bigs are great and pick and pops. Their wings are really good playing one-on-one -on -one and facilitating. So, uh, but certainly he's, you know, um, you know, the focal point, as you said. And I think, you know, the time and energy that we put into him was significant. It was in the past too, but um, you know certainly when he's clearly that number one guy and who initiates so many things for them and creates not just for himself, his passing is pretty special to those pop bigs. Um, so you know he's it, it's it's different. Thanks, bud. All right, thanks.